Welcome to a special episode of the Polist Examiner. Today, I'm going to take a look at the Bearded and Coles comic cover challenge, specifically looking at Image Comics. I stumbled onto their videos, uh, I think it was in the last couple weeks, where they put out a challenge to show the top 10 favorite Image Comic covers. Uh, and uh, this is not my top 10 favorite image comics <laughs> from a plot line storyline point of view. This is uh, specifically looking at the covers. So before I jump into my top 10, I had to at least share the two that bring back so many memories. The, the, uh, the two iconic covers I feel like started everything over at Images, Wildcats number one and Young Blood number one. Rob Liefeld and Jim Lee. Spawn number one should probably be included in this. I didn't grab that out of my collection, but these two came right out of my collection. I remember vividly walking into the comic shop and buying this comic many, many years ago. So 90s were a time of gimmick covers and there were lots of foil covers coming out over at Image. I really liked the Shadowhawk covers that came out with the foil. Uh, I think it was like Shadowhawk 3 had like the die cut on top of the foil. But Brigade, issue number two, had a very unique take on the foil cover. I liked it's partially Rob Liefeld, uh, definitely from his Extreme Studios, the Brigade series was. But if you look at this, it's very shiny and foily. And I need to find the right light here. I forget the character's name, I should probably look that up, but uh, it reminds me a lot of uh, the Cable's brother from X-Force. Same look, just saying. <laughs> a lot of swipes going on here, but if you look at this closely, it was a, a take on a foil cover where the good guy here is reflecting off the entire helmet of the bad guy, which is done in foil. And uh, interestingly, there, <laughs> the title's even called Blood Brothers. I don't remember this plot line. I just remember the cover being really cool. So that, that was my number 10 pick there. Hopefully the camera is able to pick that up without too much glare on the foil. For a long time, you've probably uh, come across these many times in the dollar bins now. But I paid full price, which was $4.95 back in the day, which was a lot back then and picked up the entire crossover and the covers were done by both valiant artists and image artists depending on the story i think in that book this is called death mate black the black issue they were color coded and had again some foil wrap around but this cover was done by both mark silvestri and jim lee uh, that's why it's pretty cool it was a combo cover there and you can see, I think it's some of Cyber Force. Uh, this might be Turok from Valiant. I think that's Exo Manowar from Valiant. So you, you had that crossover done by two of the top artists over at Image. So I thought that was a pretty cool cover back in the day. Uh, Trencher was this, I think, four issue miniseries that came out from Image Comics many years ago. And I loved the art style. It was so unique, different, and Trencher was also another <laughs> swipe. Uh, he's a uh, clone of Lobo from DC Comics. So another swipe for Image Comics here, whether it's the X Comics or the even DC Comics. And th this cover has some form of a uh, miniature version of Elvis looking up at Trencher and it was weird but very unique style and art and I remember just thinking wow that's a cool cover this cover by Stephen Platt who signs his name as Splat is Supreme fighting Supreme I assume it's a future and a current one and his artwork has that giant muscles style of the 1990s 
but I really like the way he does the detail work on his art and this cover again I just remember it being a really cool cover to buy Savage Dragon was one of the other original series from Image Comics and I'm not showing the Savage Dragon issue number one that I think most people are used to I'm showing you the other issue number one and I love this cover by Eric Larson the use of shadows and dark space on it are pretty cool uh, Savage Dragon has some cuts across the forehead so he's bleeding it's, you know for a teenage kid in the 90s this was cool so once again another awesome cover from Image Comics this time from Eric Larson here's a new school let me take it out of the bags and board here I am not a huge fan of the Hickman run of X-Men I haven't dug into it maybe it would like it but he did the series decorum and one of the best features of decorum was the artwork so different so unique jumping into some of the different things that were added into the pages that jump from gritty black and white art to full color paintings abstract alien worlds just amazing artwork and i believe it uh, the art was all done by mike huddleston and this was one of my favorite covers there's i think there's eight or nine issues from the series and each one of them there's multiple covers wrap around covers every time and this is purely black and white with yellow as the spot color across the entire cover front and back and just amazing unique artwork I really liked that story as well hopefully Hickman will find time to write a sequel to Decorum. One of my favorite comic books of the 90s, again, was Incredible Hulk. And Dale Keown, if I'm pronouncing his last name right, Keown, Keown, he was the artist for the Peter David run of Incredible Hulk. And I could not wait to read Incredible Hulk week to week just amazing artwork yet again and his series when he came over to image was pit which again might resemble the incredible hulk a little bit you would say but pit was this alien being with giant claws strength and size of the incredible hulk and i believe he protected a little child throughout the series too it's been a while since i've read it but here is issue number eight seven Issue number seven, I really liked. Again, this is similar to the Eric Larson cover where it's using shadows and darkness all around to bring out the details of the character. I really like this. Uh, issue number one also had a cool kind of close up of the pit's face, but this one's a little bit farther back. You get his sharp claws. Again, just a awesome looking cover from the 90s. <laughs> Now we're getting into my top three. So uh, we're gonna start with number three here. That is Mark Texiera's cover for Union number one. Even though this is another foil cover, the, the foil is not the reason it's cool, that's the artwork. Texiera did some amazing covers back in the day. The, the Wolverine covers that he was doing were amazing. This cover still sticks in my mind. I remember seeing it on the rack at the comic book shop. His artwork is different and unique and it has this gritty feel to it, which you're gonna see the next two artists in my top three are also the same way. And, and number two is Youngblood Strike File, which again I don't even really, really remember this series but I remember the cover because it was Jay Lee Jay Lee did this version of Chapel on the cover here 
and again the artwork is just phenomenal it's got that gritty dark feel to it that i like <laughs> texiera jay lee that eric larson cover you can see the the, the type of uh, uh, artist I like. My current favorite cover artist is Gabriel Delato. There's just something about these use of dark spaces on the cover that really brings out the characters and gives it like an edgy, gritty feeling. And Jay Lee, wow, another favorite artist of mine. <laughs> and Marvel Comics Presents was probably my favorite series as a kid collecting. I would go to the store, buy Marvel Comics Presents, and I'd get three, sorry, four stories in each issue. So I'm getting four different stories in each issue, four different artists, four different writers. It was one of my favorite series. And I remember when Jay Lee, actually I think that might have been his first Marvel book was he started working on Marvel, Com Marvel uh, Comics Presents. Number one comic cover and this may also be my favorite image series to be honest is the max and i picked issue number four because again this was a cover that just stuck in my mind i remember seeing it on the rack and i'm like oh my gosh that is just amazing you've got the max with his giant claws lined up against his head it's it's raining so there's this feeling of rain being poured down and again you get this gritty dark texture that comes in from Sam Keith who is one of my favorite comic artists. The Sam Keith covers on Marvel Comics Presents I believe are now actually becoming worth money because they're so sought after. The Venom and the Wolverine covers are something that people look for because they were just so different, unique, and cool. And here we go with the Max. I regret I stopped collecting uh, in the mid 90s and I think the last issue of the max I have is like issue 15 and I believe it went up to like issue 30 and now those issues have become hard to find I think there were lower print runs on the higher numbers and the prices make it difficult to buy sometimes so uh, maybe someday I'll finish my run of the max I've seen the, the trades and that's another option is to pick up the last few trades to kind of complete the series but these covers that Sam Keith did the first issue number one again just like Wildcats and Youngblood and Spawn are just iconic covers um, I, similarly to this cover if you remember Spawn issue number four where it's that close-up shot of the violator same kind of thing from Todd McFarlane but this close-up shot of the max is just an amazing cover and it's my number one I want to thank Cole and bearded comic bro both for giving this challenge this was definitely a fun challenge to dig through my collection and pull out some of these old image comics that I have so some of these I haven't looked at maybe since I was 12 years old I don't know it's been a long time but these are some really cool covers and I was, I'm glad I was able to get to share them with you <laughs>